Welcome to First Kids City Online. I'm Nathan. And I'm Emily. We are so excited to worship with you and your entire family today. We're going to be praising God together, diving into God's Word, and having some fun as well. If you have bread and juice available for a time of communion, go ahead and get it ready. If you don't have bread and juice, don't worry. Whatever you have in your kitchen will be just fine. We will take the Lord's Supper together in just a few minutes. Let's take a quick look at what we're studying this month in First Kid City. Our theme is Jam Session. Everyone has a part to play. God didn't create us to be by ourselves all the time. We need other people in our lives. When we have good friends, we're able to grow closer to Jesus together. At First Kid City, we study a life app every single month. A life app is what God is doing in you to change the world around you. And this month, our life app is cooperation, working together to do more than you could do alone. When we have community, a Christ-centered group of friends, God can use all of us to spread His love. So let's say that you want to have more friends at church. There's an easy way to get connected. You can come to First Church every Wednesday night during the school year for midweek. At midweek, you'll be part of a small group. You can meet kids your own age and grow in discipleship with them. Another big thing we love to do at First Kids City is memorize God's Word. And this month, we're studying Ecclesiastes 4.9. Let's read it together. Two people are better than one. They can help each other in everything they do. Great job, everyone. Spend some time today highlighting this verse in your own Bible. That way you can find it again later. I'm super excited because guess what's next? It's game time. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to game time. I'm Mitchell. And I'm Karis. Today, we're gonna be playing a game called Hula Hoopa. <laughs> Karis, tell them how to play this game. So how you play is you need two hula hoops and a friend, and you're just gonna see who can hula hoop the longest. You ready, Mitchell? I'm ready. All right. Three, two, one, go. Oh, oh, oh! Hey, yes! Let's go. Good job, Karis. Good, Good try. job, Mitchell. If you guys take any pictures or videos of you playing, be sure to send them in. We may put them in next week's video. All Let's right, Karis. Get Karis. ready for worship. I you're gonna say that because last time you didn't say that. Thank you so much for joining us today. Now let's get ready to worship. You spoke one word and the dark became light. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. You spoke my name and my heart came to life. I believe it, I believe it, yeah. I wanna sing about it, I wanna scream and shout it. I
to continue our time of worship today by taking communion. If you don't have your bread and juice ready or whatever you have available, go ahead and prepare that right now. For thousands of years, God's people have gathered together to take a communion meal. During communion, it's important that we remember to do two things, remember and celebrate. On the night before Jesus was arrested, he gathered his disciples together for the Passover meal. But as they were eating, he did something a little out of the ordinary. He took some unleavened bread, broke it into a bunch of pieces, and passed it out to his friends. He told them the bread was his body, and they should eat it in remembrance of him. Then he took a cup and told them this was his blood of the covenant poured out for the forgiveness of sins. This seemed kind of odd, but Jesus was starting a new revolution. On the day when Jewish people gathered together, to celebrate and remember their escape from slavery at the hands of the Egyptians, Jesus was starting a new day, a day when all people would be free from the slavery of sin and death. In a few short hours, Jesus would be arrested and crucified. He would get the punishment for the sins that we committed. It was a terrible thing, but because of what Jesus did, we no longer have to be separated from God. We are free to live with Him wholly and completely. We remember the life that Jesus led, how He never sinned, His amazing teachings and miracles, and we celebrate how He died for our sins and three days later rose again in the resurrection, defeating sin and death forever. And all of God's people to this day gather together to share this meal as one family. If you would like to remember and celebrate Jesus with us today, we invite you to take communion at home right now. One of the most important things you can do to love Jesus is to love God's heart. Here at First Kids City, that's just how we talk about prayer. Prayer is simply sharing your heart with God and letting Him share His heart with you. It's like talking to a close friend or a relative. Today, we are going to pray together as a family. I'm going to say the prayer for us, and when I'm finished, we will all say amen together, which means I agree. I encourage you to get into a posture of prayer at home right now. The position of our bodies often reflects the position of our hearts toward God. So feel free to get down on your knees, lay down on the floor, stand with your hands reaching toward God, or even just fold your hands and close your eyes. Are you ready? Let's pray. Father, today we come before you in worship, and we thank you for everyone tuning in today, worshiping with us. We ask your blessing be on all of us as we dive into your word today. Open our eyes to your truth, and may we learn to love like Jesus. And all God's kids say, Amen. Now, let's get ready to hear a message from God's Word. What's up, everyone? I'm Haley, and nothing cheers me up like a good sing-along. Of course, sing-alongs work a lot better when you're not the only one in the room. Sorry, Warren. 
They really require cooperation. Cooperation is working together to do more than you can do alone. Sing-alongs bring people together. They make people happy. And they can make the world a better place. I love it when musicians get together for a sing-along to help raise money for other people. This one's for the children. There was a farmer had a dog and Bingo was his name. Oh, B I N G O B I N G O B I N G O. You see, different people with different talents all coming together with the same goal to help people in need. That's major cooperation. Today's story is about a person who was in need and the friends who worked together to help him. Maybe my musician friends can help me with my sing-along. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Life is but a dream. Much better together. I'll see you soon. Bye! The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke. Chapter 5, verses 17 through 26. Imagine living in Judea 2,000 years ago. If you got sick, there were very few doctors. If you couldn't see or hear or walk, there was no one you could turn to for help. Please, help me. But when Jesus began to travel and teach and heal, suddenly there was hope. A way to get better and start life all over again. Stories of Jesus reached a man in Capernaum who couldn't walk and his four friends. Let's call them Leo, Mike, Raph, and Donnie. Jesus is in town! Right here in Capernaum, over at Joe's house! Ginormous crowd, dude! The man who couldn't walk tried hard not to get his hopes up. I can't even get there, much less fight my way through a crowd. You don't have to, because we got you. Ready? Dude, one. Two, three, lift! The four friends each grabbed the corner of the man's mat. Together they carried him out of the house and down the dusty road. Soon, they could hear the sounds of a large crowd. There's Joe's place! Oh, yeah! What's happening? People jammed in 20 deep around the door. We got religious leaders, teachers, poor people, rich people, standing room only! Actually, there's no standing room, dude. Only room is up. Sure enough, around the back of the house, the four friends discovered a narrow staircase up to the flat roof. Wait, how is this any better? And down, dudes. Hold it. We can't even hear Jesus. Oh, we can't hear him yet. That's about to change. Help me pry up this clay. It's time to raise the roof. Within minutes, the four friends pried up large sections of packed clay to reveal a rough thatch of sticks connecting the roof beams. <laughs> Gotta bust these out. And voila! As dust and beams of sunlight spilled into the room, the four friends could see the shocked crowd gaping up at them. The only one who didn't seem shocked was the man at the front, watching them with deep, kind eyes. Jesus! Hey, all y'all people down there, get ready, because our friend is coming through. The four friends each grabbed the corner of the mat and began to lower their friend into the rough hole they had created. Hey, what's going on? Hey, wait, you wait, can't wait, do wait, this. Wait, this. Wait, what is this? What is this? What Hold on. on. In spite of the confusion, the man who couldn't walk was finally lowered to the floor, right in front of Jesus. The nerve! Just look at all this damage. Jesus wasn't looking at the damage or the shocked crowd. His eyes went from the man on the floor to the four faces peering through the hole in the roof. In their eyes, he'd read what they'd done 
and how certain they were that he could heal their friend. He saw their faith. Then, Jesus smiled at the man on the floor. Friend, your sins are forgiven. <laughs> the religious leaders didn't dare speak their thoughts aloud, but inside their heads, they were nearly screaming. Who is this fellow to say such an evil thing? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Jesus could tell exactly what was going on in their heads and hearts. Why are you thinking these things in your hearts? Is it easier to say, your sins are forgiven? Or to say, get up and walk? He wouldn't dare. Well, at least everyone will see he's a fraud. Jesus had God's power to meet the greatest need of the man who couldn't walk by forgiving his sins. But that wasn't something the religious leaders could see. So Jesus gave them something they could see. I want you to know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Jesus looked down again at the man on the mat, right into his eyes. Get up, take your mat and go home. It seemed that everyone, from the four friends on the roof to the people jammed in the doorways and windows, was holding their breath. The man who couldn't walk sat up. Then he stumbled to his feet. His friends cheered. Oh, you got this! Deep breath. Baby steps. Bring it, dude. The man took a step, a hop, a leap. I, I can walk. I can walk. Praise God. The man grabbed his mat and danced out of the house to meet his friends for a group hug. The crowd was amazed and filled with wonder. Most unusual thing I've seen in all my years. Well, praise God. Praise God. Through the power of God and the help of a few friends, the man who once couldn't walk now ran home on his own two feet. His life forever changed. Whenever Jesus was in town, people hurried to see him. The word was that Jesus could miraculously heal people. So the man who couldn't walk needed help to get to Jesus. And his friends went above and beyond to make that happen. They saw a need and they worked together to do something about it. And don't miss this, don't miss this. Jesus saw that the man had a different kind of need. It's the same need that all of us have. The man needed to be forgiven of his sins. He got the miraculous healing he was looking for, plus he was forgiven. You and I can have that same forgiveness because of what Jesus did on the cross. So there are needs all around us, in our homes, in our schools, in our communities, even the world. And you can do something about it, but you don't have to do it alone. Right? B A India Bingo! You can work together with others. Maybe you can form a team to help clean up your park or help out in your neighborhood. Maybe you could put on a show to help raise money for people in need in your own community or in other countries. Sometimes needs seem too big to tackle alone. So why not work together? That's the one thing to remember today. Work together to help someone in need. Ask God to help you see the needs all around you. And together, we can make the world a better place. I'll see you next time. Rock on, people! Y'all come back now, you hear? Like, bye! <laughs> what they said. Thanks so much for joining us on First Kid City Online. You're always welcome to join us for live services happening every Sunday at 9.30 or 11 a.m and we would love to hear from you. If you have any great pictures or videos of your family participating in worship or our game time, please send them to us down below. And don't forget, Sunday Fun Day is this month. Sunday Fun Day happens every fifth Sunday. We go all out to create a special weekend experience here at First Church. There will be donuts, prizes, and live teaching. It's a great day to invite friends or attend your first in-person Sunday service. And that's all for us today. Be sure to like and share this video with your friends. Bye.